Welcome, everyone, to uh, the Pete and Pepe Hour here on FreethinkRadio.com. This is Chris Freedom Flowers filling in for uh, Pete and Pepe uh, for today. Uh, but they'll be back. No worries there. Uh, so uh, we are joined by Howard Nima, who is with We Are Change Connecticut, to discuss the uh, Bilderberg Group. So I want to take this time to welcome uh, Howard to Freethink Radio. Hey, Howard, what's up, bro? Oh, it's doing. things are doing well. Things are doing well. How are you, Chris? Oh, I'm doing good, man. Couldn't We're complain. Spreading the message. Spreading the message. Indeed. Yeah, so why don't we talk about the Bilderberg Group? Uh, we know what this nefarious cult-like group is. You know, you can give them... A lot of people just focus on the Bilderberg Group, but they don't associate them with the Illuminati. They think they're a group of their own, when in fact, you know, they are part of the Illuminati. They are the Illuminati, just like Skull and Bones is, and just like the Trilateral Commission, Council on Foreign Relations. They're all the same players. Absolutely, all the same players, and we can't forget, you know, uh, Aurelio Spice and uh, and the Club of Rome with uh, Alexander King and those eugenists, and and we we can't forget uh, the the other bodies like the Royal Institute of International Affairs, for which is like the 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 British portion, which really is a big portion of it, um, and then of course the CFR controls it all. That's the, mm-hmm. that's the central point. Uh, for, the, for their, their, uh, their, through the United Nations, they're dictating to the United Nations. The United Nations is then saying, "This is our authority to do this," but they're really like the think tank for the United Nations, and that's that's their control grid. That's what they're trying to do. That's why Obama, in the paper today, I couldn't believe it. Read it today. Um, is uh, you know he doesn't have to uh, worry about this because the United Nations is handling it, and we're only a partial player, so he doesn't have to abide by this ninety day. Uh, restriction. He doesn't have to tell Congress anything. Yeah. So, well, have have you heard, uh, uh, Howard? Have you seen the posts on Facebook about? Uh, it, it is everywhere, my friend. Everywhere, where ten Congress women are actually taking Obama to court. Yes. Yes, I did. So, what do you make of that? Well, I, I think that you know, finally, there's there's uh, there's getting down to the point where we're seeing that. Well, the people can't take this anymore. I mean, you have to just understand that he's a war criminal. He is. He is. He should be impeached. He is. He defied the Constitution. He many times no signing statements. Do I don't know how many weeks was he president? How many he did his first signing statement? And they actually announced it. The president has just made his first signing statement. Like like they're proud of it. Like to 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 sort of like again to to program us. To these, to their will, program us to their will and their agenda, and to say that there's nothing wrong with it. And what are you, what are you talking about? You know. Um, so I, I think that it's a great indictment, and and we, we all have to keep doing it. We all have to. What do you think about Ron Paul? Uh, they try asking him like, what he likes to with people, Does he like hot sauce? I mean, at this debate, I mean, it was a joke, uh, and he, you could see he was frustrated, but he wasn't gonna. You know, I personally think he should have opened his mouth and said, let's talk about what we should be talking about, not hot wings and what TV show I like, so the New World Order can continue their agenda of bullshit. Yeah. So, well, speaking uh, of bullshit, if you listen to uh, Dennis Healy, right, this guy is a 30-year uh, member of the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group. I mean, you look at what he said, right? He said that to say we were striving for a one-world government is ex- exaggerated, but not wholly unfair. Those of us in Bilderberg felt we couldn't go on forever fighting one another for nothing and killing people and rendering millions homeless, so we thought that a single community throughout the world would be a good thing. Bullshit! Oh, absolutely. It's incredible. And, and again, you know, this is the tax collector. He was the tax collector of England, or still, well, I don't know if he still is, but I know that he was all through the 70s and 80s. 80s, mm-hmm. uh, and and you know him and 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 the and the two eugenist psychos, well Prince Bernard uh, uh, and uh, Bernard, uh, w- w- the two of them really started it, Bilderberg. Oh, the Netherlands, yeah. It, in the Netherlands, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, and then of course his cousin is Prince Philip. Yeah. And they're Nazis. There's pictures of them. There's plenty of pictures on the internet. You just got to look them up. It's unbelievable. They were like marching with Hitler, shaking hands with Hitler, hanging out with Hitler. You know, it's just unbelievable. And these people have con- re- maintained control. BASF is a, is a Nazi company. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, 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 it, it's just there's 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 many of them. And uh, the whole petroleum industry is 
is, is you know, in fact, infested with Nazis, and it's just unbelievable. Um, uh, of course, medical. You got all of the, 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 the companies that came out after the war. You know, IG Farben got all split up. But anyway, we're, that, that is really how the Bilderberg uh, group, I think, came together. What do you think, Chris? It was because of this consolidation. They needed to consolidate what power they, they had achieved and what the, and you know the Soviet Union was obviously not in the in the game at that point. No, exactly. And the fact, Howard, that it was uh, established in in the fifties, right? I think it was fifty four. I believe fifty four, right? That that was the height of the whole scare. That you know everybody was watching TV. Every every child in the classrooms had those. Uh, you know, that, 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 that lesson they'd call it, that education they would call it, where it would be a fear-mongering for nuclear war. Okay? And, yeah, you know, the whole... Get under your table, get under your desk, yeah. you know, hide, boom, you know, yeah. Go ahead. So you go ahead, you go uh, with that, and that tells you that Russia, you know, at that time wasn't part of it, because that, according to, you know, the, the powers that be, the elitist, Russia was their enemy. You know, and you look at all the people, like all the... Um, companies or organizations that are part of the Bilderberg groups, I mean, you know, you got CEOs, you got chairmen there, you got uh, oil companies, the Royal Dutch Shell, British Petroleum, you know, right. monarchs, European monarchs, the people who, out, who are out there worshipping the Windsor family are part of the Bilderberg group. Of course. Of course. And, and then it goes into the military. Don't forget the military. Again, against the Logan Act uh, on both sides. Uh, uh, it was it was shown, uh, of course, that Gates, the two Gates, uh, Gates the uh, eugenist, yep. you know, Bill Gates, he was there from Microsoft. Uh, the head of Google was there, planning our our internet shutdown and and control grid. And then, of course, Gates, Secretary of uh, Defense. Yeah, that is. A, I mean, a total. And even though he's stepping down, he's still Secretary of Defense. Indeed. And you look at uh, one of the other founders of the Bilderberg Group, Joseph Redinger, or Redinger, depending on where you're from. Exactly, Redinger. I mean, you know, this piece of crap, garbage individual, you know, was notoriously known for uh, the nefarious things that, that he was a part of. Oh, absolutely. It, 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 these people are, they're, 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 they're mass murderers. That's what they are. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're and, and collectivists. They just want to get all the power. They want they want to kill their competition. Um, recently, uh, McDonald's was bought out by a private corporation of shareholders. I wonder who did that. I'm still haven't figured out who it was, but uh, not McDonald's. Uh, excuse me, Burger King. Burger King, yeah. Burger King, excuse me. Um, they 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 just were again, you know, from from you know being like a you know privatized. So. Well, when you look at the, you look at the Bilderberg Group, right? And we were talking about Russia, okay? And uh, you know, it was during the height of the Cold War, obviously. And there is a reason why they wanted to, uh, you know, align the European continent with the American continent. And we see today, you know, fifty-seven years later, after the foundations of the Bilderberg Group were were created, you see how so tight America and the European Union is together. Oh yeah, and but the, you look when at the European the, Union was created. The Bilderberg Group was was uh, the was the crux of the European Union. That's what it was. What that's what started it. Mm -hmm. uh, that whole that whole uh, it, that was on record. Etienne Davignon went on record that they that they devised the EU, and you know the North American Union is 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 what they're after next. They already have the African Union. All these other places are are in place technically. The North American Union is in place as well. It just hasn't been announced. Like, yeah, you know. I mean, it's here. <coughs> Sorry, Howard. <laughs> yeah, it's here. When you get okay. Stephen Harper, when you get Stephen Harper, the Prime Minister of Canada, saying we'll do anything to support Israel, anything, even including putting Israel before Canada, which it, which echoes the exact sentiments and the statements that Barack Obama made. Right there, you got your North American Union. You, you really do. You're absolutely right. And again, this is part of that whole, you know, the connection to the, to the you know, the, 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 the whole Rothschild, Illuminati, uh, you know, Zionist connection there, right right there. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's all about Israel. Um, funny thing happened to me. It just reminded me of, a, of something when, you know, when I was very, very sleeping, like in a deep, deep, deep sleep in my youth, 
maybe this was about 15 years ago, I was working out in the field. I was in, I was worked for, interestingly enough, I worked for a company called Slomans, who was a home heating oil company. So it was an oil company, right? Yeah. So I, I service in this, trying to sell some, uh, an oil contract to, to this guy in Great Neck, which is like a very, like, expensive part of Long Island on the North Shore. A lot of, like, really wealthy millionaire people live up there, you know. Anyway, elitists. This guy, you know, whatever. So I remember I, I did, I think I sold him a boiler or something in a service contract for oil. And he showed me a dollar, and he says, he says the Jews own all the money. And he said this to me, and he's a Jew. Yeah. And he said it literally to me and sh- took out a dollar and showed me. the. That was the first time that I noticed that there was actually a Jewish star on a dollar bill. He says, we own the money. That's what he said to me. And I thought he was a nut. Um, now, this is a long, 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 long time ago, and I never really thought about it, but it's sort of like something that never left the memory banks, you know? But he's just, you know, he was just trying to say what it was, you know? And uh, But very arrogant, like, you know, like, what are you going to do about it, you know? Um, and I was clueless. I was a kid. You know, at that time, I was I was, I was really young. <laughs> and uh, But that, that's, the, that's it. This guy probably could have been a Bilderberg player. Because that's the kind of wealth that was in this area. I mean, uh, movie stars lived there. Uh, a certain couple of them, like Alan Arkin, lived lived up there, and uh, you know, uh, many uh, uh, North Shore, the gold. It's called the Gold Coast of Long Island. Anyway, mm-hmm. but anyway, just a digression of the story. So, uh, but get, getting back to the Bilderbergs, you know, Etienne Davignon, who's who's, uh, I think they're 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 changing the reins. Did you hear anything about that, uh, Chris? Yeah, I heard that they're going into a, like a, a different area, you know, with the with what we were talking about earlier before we came on the air. With uh, particularly the latest Bilderberg meetings, there are much more low level players that a lot of people, a lot of truth seekers, are not aware of who these people are. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, attending Bilderberg meetings that it's not just the CEOs of the large companies of the, you know, the top level bankers, politicians, but it's their aides. You know, their second in commands uh, that are attending the meetings for them. Right. They so want to I mean, sort of a cover. They're covering their their act. They're trying to, to to shadow themselves, to cover themselves. Exactly. You know, and you know the Bilderberg at, at the meetings. When they hold those meetings, that's where they discuss the agendas that they have uh, that they are planning to implement for the, you know, for that following year. And one thing I'm going to say here, Howard, is I think one of those implementations is to destroy. The majority of the population on this planet of not just human beings, but all life by more than 80% by the use of uh, nuclear weapons, but not in the, f- in the form of dropping nuclear weapons, but nuclear meltdowns at nuclear plants. Yeah, ac- like we've seen that accident. Fukushima. Accident, accident. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Quote, unquote, accidents. And we're seeing it in Nebraska, you know, yeah. where it's at a level four right now. And um, people are terrified to death, and they should be. And not a lot of people are uh, discussing this issue about Nebraska. I mean, I was on CNN this morning, Howard. I didn't know about about Nebraska. Oh, yeah, I was on CNN this morning, brother, and um, there was not one mention for the hour and a half that I was watching it where they stated anything about Nebraska, about the nuclear uh, problems that they're having there, about the massive flooding, nothing. Wow. I didn't even know what happened. When did this happen, Chris? Uh, I think I'm not sure. I don't want to say for sure, but uh, I found I mean, out about it recently. You know, but recently uh, I found out this morning about it. Wow. I uh, so, heard of that. yeah. Well, you know, again, they're just going to say it's okay. The drinking water's safe. You know, go back to work. Go back. You know, be a slave. Let's let's grab some more money out of your check every week, and you know, take your property away when you know you rightfully own it, and, because says that we had a mortgage on it you know it's back to this tyranny I don't know makes yeah. me crazy it makes me crazy sometimes but let's yeah. try to stay on uh, subject back to the Bilderbergs yeah. right I want, I want to go back to something that was mentioned in 1915 okay when it was a congressional investigation that was uh, it had to do with the power of philan- uh, philanthropy and their foundations okay that took place it was called the Walsh Commission and the Walsh Commission called the Walsh that- Commission and the Walsh Commission warned that the power of wealth could overcome or actually overwhelm democratic culture and politics. And we're seeing this. 
This was almost 100 years ago, and we're seeing this right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Corporatism. I mean, it's, it's really, that's what it is. It's corporatism. It's like fascism. The corporations rule over the people. It's not what the people want, as we know. We don't want bailing out banks. We don't. We didn't want any of this. Give, what, 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 if, what if it went the other way? Could you imagine? They said, well, listen, we're going to give the people $770 billion, which mm -hmm. would have come out to like 35 or 40 grand a piece or something like that. Now, do you think that would have helped the economy? Instead of giving it to bankers? I, yeah, I think it would have helped the economy, to be Absolutely. honest with you, Howard. Of course, of <laughs> no doubt. It would have. Of course it would, but it's like, it's absurd to give the people, they can't take them. What are they, they, they can't. What, that's how you know it's fraud. If you're going to ban, if you're a big government like we have, and we have the capability to do all this and go into debt, why not go into debt with the, with the promises of future prosperity? What do you think? We're going to piss the money away? No. People mm -hmm. are going to start businesses, they're going to pay off their debts. They're going to buy property, they're going to buy cars, they're going to buy all products. And they're, they're going to buy farms. farms. They're going to buy farms and grow their right. own products they won't, they as opposed to Monsanto. That. That's the problem. It would be individualism. Individualism. But now they literally bailed us out into a place where even if that was ever a possibility to give the people something, there's not much to give. Yep. You see? They destroyed it. They, there's nothing exactly. They sucked. They sucked the life out of this government. You know, and the whole world is paying the price for what these few well, look at Greece, evil people. Screaming on the news today. Yep. It's and you know, a lot of price. these. There are a lot of riots, Howard, that I believe that were um, engineered by the CIA. Like Egypt would be one of them. You know, but on the other hand, you have these riots that are started by people who are just plain pissed off that they're not going to take it anymore. You know, and this, of course, is, is something that the Illuminati will use as a way to try to take away our rights. But if we're going to riot, we got to do it in a better way. You know, we have to do it in a collective manner. You know, unity among each other, and we got to do it in the form that know who our enemy is, and when we take a stand, we take a stand against all of them. Yeah, but you see, that's the problem. They 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 create this illusion that there's this enemy that's like it's sort of like a, sometimes it's in you know, right now it's might be in, it's going into Syria we're going into Syria so yeah. now you know it just keeps shifting it's like a like a like like a like a chameleon or a shapeshifter well listen the problem first the problem was in Iraq and Afghanistan now we're moving along we got that taken care of or we're moving along now we got Libya they're still working on that one but they just keep moving along and now we got Syria and Pakistan, and mm, you know, let's, let's move along a little bit. That's what they're doing, and they're yeah. just going to keep doing it until they get every control of all of these, these, uh, uh, I, I don't know, what do you, Middle Eastern nations. I don't know what to call them. I don't know. Yeah, that's I, no, you got it. That's yeah. uh, <laughs> that's the best way you can put it. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, that's, was thinking about, I was thinking of all these expletives. I just didn't want to go there because it's it yeah. sound racist. <laughs> but anyway, but you, the people out there don't realize that the Crusades never ended. Okay? Oh, no. It's still going on to this very day. As Howard and I are speaking right now live on air, the Crusades are continuing. Yep. And as we speak on air, the New World Order are implementing their agendas, you know, and it's all geared towards one thing, that is depopulization, and that's what the Bilder group, Bilderberg Group do when they meet, is they plan our demise via many aspects, many ways, including chemtrails, vaccinations, false flag operations, nuclear meltdowns, which they actually fucking drop nukes on nuclear uh, facilities, you know, using heart to uh, control our weather and to destroy you know, vast our life. Areas of, vast areas of the, of, the, of the nation, like with the Mississippi River, what they've done down in Missouri and all these other states in Mississippi. And then, you know, it's funny. I, 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 moved, I moved to Connecticut from New York City about six years ago. And I had these, like, really beautiful, ro robust, like, trees on my property. And for the first couple of years, everything seemed fine. Now, mm -hmm. they're like, two of the trees are dead, completely dead. And every year, they're just shedding all this dead wood. They're like covered like they they, they, they they like lose their bark from these chemtrails. They're breathing in these chemtrails. Oh yeah. 
and 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 you know whatever, however whatever there's I, we don't even know what is the result of the. Now they're breathing in the chemtrails, so what what's what are they pushing out as well, and and it's killing them because you can see they're dropping. I mean I'm not kidding. I had like a hundred trees on my property, and in the last three years, it's been like every every year just more and more, more and more. And, and trees just don't die when they were healthy. I have pictures of my house, and it was brand, you know, when I first got here, and the trees were healthy and normal. You know, it's unbelievable. Oh, and it's not just that, Howard. I mean, uh, you know, where I live, there are a lot of uh, areas that are, you know, uh, wooded, a forest in a sense, right? And you could see certain, like I remember 20, 30 years ago when I was a little kid, you know, like it was so vast. And now there are so many areas in the woods where nothing grows. It's just barren. It's dead. Right. Nothing's growing. They're, 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 that's that's geoengineering. That's yeah. That's what they're doing. They're killing. And then and and you know they're poisoning the soil. Um, it, it's just it's just it's clear. It's clear. I'm just going to pause for a second, Howard, to do a station identification. Uh, you're listening to FreethinkRadio.com. This is the Pete and Pepe Hour. I'm Chris Freedom Flowers, filling in for. Uh, Peter and Pepe, uh, they're not here today, so I'm just going to uh, do their show for them. Uh, I'm with Howard Nima of We Are Change Connecticut. We're discussing the Bilderberg Group as well as uh, depopulization. We're going to cover a few topics here tonight, guys, but if you want to call in, uh, feel free to do so. The number is 1-315-541-4031. You can add us on Skype at Freethink Radio or personally email us at freethinkradio at gmail.com. So, yeah, Howard, getting back to the Bilderberg group here, you know, you, you, you take a look at somebody like, uh, I believe it was Prince Bernard. Okay, this guy was part of the Nazi party, you know, until he married um, Princess Julia, okay, three years later. So, this guy is part of the Nazi uh, party, and then he's a co-founder of the Bilderberg group. That should set alarms off for uh, a lot of the people out there who are not aware of what this nefarious fucking group is. Yeah, you know that's the thing. It's like they, 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 they their secrecy for so many years. I mean, how, how many how many years of denial did they have, Chris? I mean, you had for for thirty years they were saying you were a conspiracy theorist. Mm -hmm. that they don't even meet. That these meetings don't exist. Um, and then finally, the mainstream media admits it. Uh, everything's in secret. Only only evil is done in secret. The idea of having transparency means that that there's nothing wrong. Uh, but that's not, you know, that's not going to work with these guys because their whole goal from the beginning, as you were saying, bringing it back to 1913, or actually you said 15, but C13, the Federal Reserve was to was to again steal the wealth, and then uh, 20 years later, the Depression, and they said, listen, we have to take your gold now. In 1934, we got to take the gold because the government's broke. Meanwhile, they broke the government, and they did it again. Mm -hmm. They take your land. Now they have to take your land. They have to take your house. I mean, for years, for the past few years, Howard, we've been hearing about China. You know how China was a threat to America, how America is selling off all of its assets to China. And then Daniel Estulin breaks this story a couple of days ago, how uh, China, is there a place for them in the New World Order? Well, China's already been part of the New World Order. You take a look at the Lee family, the one of the 13... You know, families of the Illuminati. So this is not just like America losing money, sending assets over to China. They're doing this for a reason, okay? And I want the people out there to understand that China um, <coughs> has a lot of control over America. America owes them tons of uh, money. Yeah, and I came up with this. It's war. I came up with this. Uh, yeah, man. I came up with this theory, Howard. You know, um, a while ago, just after the whole issue that took place in Japan at Fukushima, you know, with the power plants, that they may be because they can't obviously pay back China what they owe them. So the only way you could basically do it is give them land, give China land. So why not destroy Japan, you know, and then give it over to China? Right. Go in there, you know, they're gonna, the Americans going to go in there and they're going to be the saviors, you know, and they're going to be like, we saved Japan. And next thing you know, it's not going to be Japan anymore, it's going to be a Republic of China. Hmm. And of course I've been called a crazy, you know, nut job for my theories on that, you know, that subject, and people are entitled to their opinion. Uh, 
but you know, exploring it. I, I, I never yeah. thought of it from China's perspective. But I mean, why would they want that irradiated, disgusted land? Because of the resources, they bring people in radiation suits and just built the resources like aliens or something. You know, it <laughs> could be. You never know with the New World Order, man. You know. That's true. They could build FEMA camps there and put people there, you know, yeah, better way, them. faster hey, way to kill them. Hey, you know something, you're right. They're actually, you got a point there. They could, that's right. They could now, knowing that it's a death zone, they just, you know, you get here, you got to go there and then you just die, you know. Yeah. You imagine putting people like they're like just not not in suits and then there's all, all the controllers are wearing suits and all the slaves and they're, they're all like, just like you and I. And, and, and the controllers are all protecting themselves there. Oh, it's just a horrible picture. But, uh, all too possible. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. But I think we all need to be keeping our eyes on what's going on with Japan and China and the markets. You know, and uh, as well to the Bilderberg Group because the Bilderberg Group are the ones, you know, that plan whatever is going to happen. And the Bilderberg Group, they're the same as the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, they're all the same people involved. Yeah, it's all the same, it's all the same players. Same team. You know, and they got free, and people don't realize something, you know, when they talk about the educational system, that, like, the Rockefeller, uh, Rockefellers, they founded the education system, you know, uh, they wrote the books for the education system, okay, and these are the people that are involved in the Bilderberg Group. That's right. You know, but nobody ever mentions it. No, of course not. And they don't mention, you know, about the social control and people who who are were insiders like like um, Charlotte Iserby, who who was uh, t uh, head of the Department of Education under Reagan. She realized what was going on. Turns out, her father was actually Skull and Bones, but he wasn't like um, he was like peripherally, like you know, like he was just. I don't know, part of the club or something like that. He wasn't really an, an, an active member, but he was. He definitely was Skull and Bones. And she got this position, I guess, maybe because of that, who knows, um, back in the 80s. And uh, she fought it out with Reagan and sent some really, uh, you know, interesting information to Reagan saying this is Soviet-style, you know, and, and he never responded. Mm -hmm. So it's just, um, but it is. It's a Soviet-style, um, you know, discipline schedule for the for the schools. I mean, the education system is ridiculous. I mean, they don't teach you about the Constitution. They, don't, they teach you very little about history. Um, you know, math and science, yeah, you know, a little bit. You know, but it's, uh, it's, it's really bad. Yep. But no, you know, people need to pay attention. You know, I keep saying it over and over again. Uh, but what's going on, Howard, in your area when it comes to uh, the We Are Change meetings? You guys getting a, go a good amount of uh, members? I'm getting I'm getting some activity going. We're trying to put a rally together. Uh, I was hoping to get something for the Fourth of July, but it's right upon us, and that didn't happen. But soon, I got a, I got a, probably about maybe um, a core of people probably would get together uh, to to make some noise. Of maybe about fifty to one hundred. But we have got a lot of members, you know, like, you know, a lot of people that are involved. There's just not so many people that are willing to be active, unfortunately. So if you're listening, be active. You know, we have to do things. We have to make some noise. I'd, I certainly want to uh, expose the Federal Reserve for their mm -hmm. activity. And 9-11 is, is coming up again as, as usual every year. The 10th anniversary, the big 10th one. 10th anniversary, it's a big one. And uh, we'll be going down to New York, that's for sure. Um, the thing is, they, the actual organization wants to have it on, like, the, before, the day before, and, it's like, people are, like, in conflict about it. Um, so, you know, it's like, it's sort of like an organization, but it's not an organization. You know, it's like we're all, like, yeah. sort of, like linked together for the same purpose. But the, the official We Are Change, Luke Rodowski, um, they're planning a big protest, but it's not on the date. And, and I, I think they're working on changing that. I don't know. But he did some great reporting, by the way. Tremendous work uh, at Bilderberg uh, confronting these criminals. They took yeah. his passport away. They, they, they you know, uh, didn't give it to him for about a half an hour. They can, you know, they, they were, again, telling him he couldn't film, but of course he can, you know. And all these other things. He's now working uh, on RT, actually, uh, Russia TV. 
So no, I like what Jim uh, what Jim Tucker does. Jim you know, Tucker, I didn't even yeah, we uh, talk about him for hours. Yeah, that guy, you know, is a one dedicated individual. I mean, at his age, still doing this, you know, still going after the New World Order and the Bilderberg Group after what they put him through, being chased by cars, you know, being threatened to be killed. Many times being threatened to be killed, being chased, yeah. you know, and, uh, uh, and and things like that. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's like a J James Bond type situation. I guess he's getting a little older than it. But they know he's going to be there. And uh, what do you think about the uh, Henry Kissinger uh, situation, like wanting to, you know, um, Dominic Bettig, the uh, Swiss uh, politician or Swiss congressman they, I think for the Canton there, uh, he, he went down there and tried to arrest Henry Kissinger, and I think they escorted him away. And then it was the earliest Bilderberg meeting closing ever. They, they, they sh cut it real short. So I think we're making an impact getting, you know, exposing these criminals. Yeah. And we can get close enough to these people that do some damage. I mean, we've seen YouTube video clips of, uh, you know, regular citizens approaching the the, the cars of, uh, you know, the Rothschild family, Rockefellers, screaming at them. You know, so we can get close enough to do damage, you know, and that's what's going to happen, I feel. You know, and I fear as well, because... Um, they could use that as a form to uh, come after us and destroy us. Not that I'm well, afraid. Not more, not, well, look at this. What they did. They, they this is this is how you know this tyranny. And and for folks out there that are maybe not be that are not currently awake or or just a, you know saying what is this bullshit or not really sure. They, we we had a, a, a libertarian type uh, guy that goes there from Italy, Mario Borghesio. He's mm -hmm. an EU politician. He is a member of the EU. He wants to go into their quote-unquote secret meeting because it's bullshit to be secret, and that's what, again, Dominic Betting in Switzerland, that's why he agreed and, and allowed the press to have coverage and allowed the press to uh, to be there and to protest. But this guy, Bor Borghesio, uh, goes there, and, and what do they do? This, this old guy, he's an old guy. He's like he could be your grandfather, you know? They get the Bilderberg goons, rough him up, throw him down on the floor, and break his nose. <laughs> now he's suing the Bilderberg. I don't know who he's going to sue. He's suing the, the, the company uh, who's, um, by the way, the company's symbol is, is, yeah. is an, I, an Illuminati I, interestingly enough, the security company that was secure, that was doing the security. That oh, was no their, doubt. Their logo. What a, what, a, what a laugh, you know? But... Uh, so look at this, this is what's going on. And then, you know, they assault him. No, that's nothing. That doesn't make the news. It was not ter nothing terrible. Oh, just an EU member gets assaulted. You know, not, not reported. You know, unless unless you're really looking at it or looking for it. And and the same thing with what happened with uh, uh, the uh, David Rockefeller. They, they, they marched on him. It was his birthday. Did you see that? And you yeah, see that? yeah. That was great. I was like, I was just, I mean, I, I think I'd like to, like, share that with the world. I mean, it makes me think like that Coca-Cola commercial. I'd like to teach the world to sing. I'd like to teach the world to sing to David Rockefeller. It was just uh, amazing. They all went there with torches, like in, like in Frankenstein. <laughs> oh, lovely, yeah? It was great. I couldn't believe it. It was just amazing. And they did it in, like, such a sort of, like, you know, obviously sarcastic but loving way. And it was mm -hmm. just great. I just thought it was just it was just immense. So they're done. I, I don't think they're they're there's their secrets out that people are gonna start to you know you, they, there's nowhere they can go. They, there there's nowhere they can they can run. They there are moles everywhere amongst. Well, themselves. they could they could they could run Howard because they got those deep underground military bases. Well, that yes, they created for a, a certain reason. That's for their for their exactly. We should go into that whole thing. And mm -hmm. the movies that we see in the theaters aren't so far from reality, like in 2012, having, well, they used this, like, those, like, boats or whatever in that movie. Yeah, and like Noah's Ark. Like, right, like Noah's Ark, because they were using a theme, you know, and trying to be a little bit, you know... Using entertaining. Theme. Yeah, entertaining theme, but same concept. I mean, whether it be it there, that they're cut into a mountain someplace or underground someplace or many places and... You know, and then, you know, nuke the world and figure it out. And, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're really lunatics. When you look, when you read their writings and, like, the Rand Corporation and, and 
the documents that they put out and the, you know their plans and like from the 70s was just madness. It was like everybody was just out of their mind. You know, Dr. Cameron doing his experiments on the on the troops and you know LSD and mind control and now they have all of these mind control uh, devices that they're really tweaking. You know, to get people, uh, it's, it's just wild. I mean, it's just it's like it's totally like Buck Rogers shit. You know, I mean, it's yeah. no, it really is. I mean, you know, I, I you know what really freaked me out? I was at my I was at work, and at my job, I, I put the I had names. You know, people they come up their address when they call in, right? And I click on a name, and guess what? It goes to Google Earth, right? And shows me their house. I shit you not. So I see their driveway. Ooh, yeah. I said, oh, that's nice. You have a nice car. She says, what do you mean I have a nice car? Yeah, I'm looking right at it. And then the woman's like, wow. I was like, yeah, yeah. You went, we, we, yeah, we just want to be able to see when we send a technician out there. We want to be able to see where he is. So he got Google Earth directions. But I was bugged out. And I didn't tell you know, it was, I was just like, she was like, just wanted to see what her response would be. And she's like, oh, mm -hmm. that's great. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know. So she didn't see the implications of it, and since all the phone calls at my job are recorded, I thought I wouldn't I'd try to wake the girl up because I yeah. work for a security company uh, just to go that route. But it's really who actually uses GE equipment it makes me nauseous every day. But I got to make a paycheck, you know. But uh, getting off on a rant, sorry. But that yeah. was very strange. Very strange. Well, I want to read something here, Howard. While we have time, it's yeah, a sure. very dis dis very disgusting quote. And it's from that, uh, pardon my language for the listeners out there, but I do he curse uh, that piece of shit, yeah? Uh, he made this quote in 1991 at, a, at one oh, of the Builder, the Builder meetings. meeting in uh, France. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he said the very following, We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years, it would have been impossible, impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But the world is more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government, the uh, supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto determination practiced in past centuries. Disgusting. It's absolutely lovely. Incredible, right? Well, you know, bankers, you know, we're just slaves and that, you know, we have to we have to pay them interest, you know, that's that's all that they want. Interest and, and you know, you, you owe them something. Yeah. You know, you can always tell an elitist, you know, it's by just by the way that they by the way that they uh I don't know, just, uh, there are pictures of them. There are some pictures, like, when you, like, Google Rothschilds, and you look at some of their pictures, you can just see the arrogance in their faces, you know? The, the, they give it, you know, there's just, humanity is just a, a, a it's just disgusting to them, you know? Um, what about Ray Kurzweil? What do you think about him? Uh, refresh my, refresh me on him. Ray Kurzweil is, uh, the futurist. The one that thinks we're going to evolve into machines. Okay, yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. He's That's okay. Venus Project. Venus Project. Ray, yeah, Ray, it's uh, all the CIA stuff, all this crazy mind control shit. He's really into some wild stuff. Reminds me of him and what's his name should, uh, should get together. Uh, Jack Fresco. Yes. And, and also um, uh, Holdren, the, the science czar. I mean, we have a science czar that is basically an eco-fascist that wants to destroy our, you know, our our our, uh, our population as well. Believes in forced abortions and one-child policies, and uh, you know, but he doesn't do that anymore. He says, he just wrote a book about it. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, Daniel Estelin, uh who's well known for you know doing what Jim Tucker does, exposing the Bilderberg Group, had a pretty interesting article that he wrote uh, yesterday, and it talks about China, you know, being part of the uh, super elite Illuminati, and it goes in to talk about you know how America is just about done in terms of economic uh, issues. You know, and they talk about Egypt, Tunisia, and it's, it's a very interesting article because it's going to awaken some people out there. So if you're there, go to Daniel and just type in Daniel S. Uh, Estulin, 
Bilderberg 2011, and you'll you'll find him. You'll find his blog, and uh, I'm hoping to get him on the show uh, oh, in yeah. the near future oh, to talk get about him this. On the show, man, that's just, uh, I, I, it's great. He's a, he's a fantastic. Um, another, did you read his books? Uh, no, I never read his books. I just read what he posts. He was post. Yeah, he, he he wrote he wrote the Bilderberg group, the, the story of the Bilderberg group. Uh, great book. I mean, um, tells the whole background. Uh, wrote it a couple of years back. Good book. You know, I mean, fourteen trillion dollars in debt for America. I mean, what the hell is going on? That's uh, that's just reported debt. I've heard I've heard yeah. about twenty four trillion. Yeah. Just, you know. Well, listen. Don't you remember? Like, go back to nine eleven. Uh, what about the, they all forgot about the, the how, what was it, uh, how many trillion, or not trillion, how many billion was missing from the, from the army? From was the it 800 time? billion, 800 billion, I believe, it was, or? It was almost, it was almost a trillion, it wasn't quite a trillion. Yeah. They just couldn't account for it. You know, I mean, it's just such naked fraud, uh, and people just, oh, it's okay, it's, you know, it's the government, you know, they wouldn't do anything to harm us, you know, just, yeah. just it's like, it's like Brave New World, just take your Soma and just. Relax. Just keep going it's just a life. coincidence. There's nothing to worry about, right? Planes crash into buildings every day and knock them down. That yeah. ever in the history of mankind burned and, you know, a steel structure building crashes. Never in the history of mankind has that ever happened to collapse. Never. never. It's all related. I mean, Build the Bird Group, totally behind 9-11. Oh, yeah. Lock, definitely. Lock, barrel. No doubt about it. And now we got this issue going on where U.S. warships are on their way to the Syrian coast. Yes, Syria is the next target. In fact, listen, oh. good news, sir. I uh, heard from uh, from people that are to be deployed, uh, patriots that are that are unfortunately in the military, uh, getting orders for July deployment to an October. Listen to this, bro. October deployments to Syria. Yeah. October deployments. That's three months from now. Four months from now. Oh, yeah, because you know what? They discussed this, I'm sure, at the Bilderberg meeting. Of course. This is their agenda. Now they're pushing mm -hmm. it through. It's interesting, right? So this is yep. where they're moving. Yep. Way yeah, back in November, so you know, way back in November, Howard, there was a silly YouTube video that was posted about the Simpsons, the cartoon about a nuclear attack, you know? Well, what did we just see in Japan? Yeah. You know, and what are and we what seeing now video, in Nebraska? That, that TV show that showed the, uh, the, the the terrorists, the X Files, the terrorists uh, hijacking the plane. Yeah, lone and, gunman. Right, lone gunman. Right, right before, and that happened right before 9/11. So they do uh, often give these little hints. You know, uh, what about the whole thing? All the propaganda about the cyber security. It'll probably be a cyber <laughs> thing. You know, and then we'll have to take away your rights again. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, we got somebody, we got a hot mic on the air, so whoever that is, uh, I'm calling you out on air. Jump in. Hello? Oh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give a few seconds here to uh, let uh, my new uh, Thursday night guest, every Thursday starting next week, um, Kevin Burkhardt, to uh, join us and introduce himself to the listeners. Kevin, you here, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm here, man. Uh, that wasn't me. I think actually that was Trevor because his thing kind of just popped up right there. Um, but uh, nice to meet you all. Well, it's good to have you here, man. Nice to be here too, man. Yeah, so why don't you tell the listeners uh, a little bit about yourself, uh, whatever you want, man. Well, um, not my favorite topic to talk to myself, but, uh, well, I'm... Um, True for like well, anyone else here, so I guess that's kind of self obvious. Um, I write articles every now and again, post them on hub pages. Been doing it for about um, two years, you know, for my house. Disabled, can't work, and that's basically it. All right, well, uh, that was Kevin Brickard, who will be on every Thursday starting next week on Awaken United. Uh, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, this whole Bilderberg issue, man, you know, these fucking pieces of shit, these are the people we need to destroy. You know, I always talk about, uh, you know, peaceful protesting is not going to do anything because it doesn't matter whether you riot or you're peacefully protest, you're still portrayed as a crazy conspiracy theorist, right? And protesting just doesn't really cut it anymore. We've got to become more assertive. 
Well, how do we do that? Uh, you really want me to say that on air? <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, blow the motherfuckers up. That's a yo. Okay. Kill all the bloodlines. Well, Take them all down. Hey, you know, thoughts of, thoughts of like had you know, it's funny. Um, I was chatting it up a little bit with somebody um, during the Bilderberg meeting over the weekend. Um, and we were chatting it up and saying, wow, these motherfuckers are there. I mean, it's, but you see, you'd be using your, it's like as bad as that is, like, because it's collateral damage, but the government would do it. If, they, if it suited the government, they would have done it. But it doesn't, because they, the Bilderberg Group control the government. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if you did it like the government would do it for the Bilderberg Group against some other foreign enemy, including the Canadian people and the American people, um, you would have to say uh, people are going to die, but let's blow up the hotel. They're all dead, but they're even getting shiftier because not all of them are there. Like you said, they have their minions that go for them, you know, to like, so you really could never get them all. They're never actually yeah. all in the same place anymore. Uh, in order to beat them, I think the only way to do it is to destroy the entire bloodlines. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately it would be, it would be a great thing. Uh, I, I don't know how you could do that. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how, how it could be feasible, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we got a few other people. We got a... Yeah, we got a few other people on with us, so I'm going to, uh, since we only got about like eight minutes left, Howard, I'm going to let uh, some of the other guys uh, say well, something if they want to, uh, if they want to say something. Uh, so, Nelson, I know you're there, and I know you want to chirp. Why don't you tell us all what you got planned for True North coming up at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right after this show? Come on, Nelson. Is he there? Yeah, he's there. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I was my thing didn't. Uh, I don't got a lot planned for tonight. I got a, a few things to bitch about, but that's about it. But soon we got John Hutchinson coming up. No date. We got uh, Chris Dunn is going to give us an interview. No date. Uh, Hugh Newman is going to give us an interview. No date. And if you never heard of these people, well, get Google. Yeah. And to add on to that, expect Anthony J. Hilder to be a guest here at freethinkradio.com very soon as well. 